four of the uh, Legacy Open. The current match we're watching, um, on, your, on your left you have Joe Lawsett, who's playing a Cephalid Breakfast deck with a 1-0 to zero lead over Ben Stepka playing a Bug Visions Control deck. Now, game one, uh, we're, we're just jumping in here, but the spot on the floor says game one, Joe won on the second turn. He just, you know, played his Nomad Encore and his Cephal Illusionist, milled his entire library in Dread Return, his combo back, which ends with an arbitrarily large number of Kikijikis, not Kikijikis, Sky Hussars, attacking. Um, ben has slightly more modest, modest ambitions. He just uses a bunch of interactive cards and some card draw and tries to uh, get ahead and eventually chase his opponent out. Uh, extirpates definitely give him a powerful weapon. Oh, actually, I think we're are, we're backwards. The names are backwards. Oh, good. Yeah. So actually, yeah, Joe is actually on the right. Joe's still up 1-0, but Joe is definitely on the right. Yeah. And it yeah. looks like Joe may well he may be on the right. He's definitely on the wrong side of seven cards on his way down to six. So a couple things, interesting things of note from Twitter. Uh, first, from last game, uh, people are noting that Show and Tell does not allow you to put Jace into play. It apparently specifies card types and... Oh, yeah, but you just drop... Yeah, you don't put this Jace in play. You're supposed to just play it and then bounce the Jace. You mean play Jace and bounce the Emerald? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay, just just clarifying that. Um, and then... Yeah, because you can't put Nico Bolas in play either. That, that was one of the other big problems with it, with the uh, the Eureka decks that played Nico Bolas. So, uh, for this game, uh, just from Twitter, Liam Kane, actually, another guy. He, I don't know if he's friends with Joe or he just is... is follows Joe's uh, exploits, but <laughs> with this deck, uh, he said that Send Triplets is actually in the side in Joe's sideboard specifically for this match. For the control match? Yeah. So, so I would have thought, Send Triplets, the hive mind guy, make him play those packs. But yeah, Send Triplets, for those of you not familiar, is a five mana artifact creature, um, two blue, white, black, for a 3-3, three, three, that uh, basically you sort of get a soft mind slaver on your opponent every turn, on your turn. You know, just at the beginning of your upkeep. Yeah. And uh, allegedly, that's for this matchup, as it basically is just—I I don't know. It's—I guess it's an abeyance you can tutor for, but it costs five. So I don't know. Kind of interesting. It's um, definitely a sweet card we don't get to see very often. Yeah, not at all. What's that? Yeah. Um. Send triplets can't be killed by most bug lists. Now this bug list actually has Diabolic Edict, Putrefy, and Maelstrom Pulse, Counterspell, Force of Will, and Jace the Mind Sculptor. And Diabolic Edict, all of which will be in. Additionally, the uh, Breakfast deck has only 19 land against a deck with 4 Wastelands and 2 Life from the Loams. Hmm. So I question how relevant Send Triplets will be, but I mean, we'll see. Be pretty sick if he vials it down. <laughs> that would be pretty sick. Vial on five. Send triplets. All right. Uh, ben, two lane to play, an underground sea and a flooded strand. Just uh, ran him off fetch land. Joe lost it, fetching himself to get a second land. He's already got an underground sea. Looks like he's going to get a tundra. You can use it as a one-card combo, since you can then use the removal that Bug will have in their hand to kill their creatures. This Bug deck doesn't have any creatures. Not only does this Bug deck not have... This isn't like a, this isn't like the Team America style. Right. This is like Bug still. It has no creatures. Yeah. And not only that, if they have any removal, they will use it on the Send Triplets. You don't get to Send Triplets doesn't have haste. Right. They have a full turn to re respond. I definitely do not think that Send Triplets is going to be that crucial in this matchup. But I don't know. What do I know? I think it's you know it's kind of a sweet card. I'd be surprised if it. I would be surprised if Joe gets to five land. But I mean, does he uh, does he dread return it? It's, yeah, that seems weak when you have such a. I mean, it's just gonna die. It's a three right. three, and he has a full turn. To, I mean, he's gonna have more removal. It's not like he's gonna have less. He's gonna have more removal because removal's great against breakfast. All right, so Joe drops an ether vial, and uh, Ben is brainstorming a response, hoping to find some mental misstep. Sether Vial is definitely one of the strongest weapons against him. Okay, just, uh, he says he thought this was more of a Team America deck. Oh, yeah, yeah, this so. is definitely not a Team America deck at all. This is like Paulo's Bugsteel deck yeah. from the GP, except with Visions instead of Landsteel. Right. 
The uh, Ben, it's really interesting. We saw in his hand, he's got Force of Will, at least one blue card, and extra pick. So he definitely has some sweet things going on here. Most likely he's going to try to fight over the vial. The, uh, where things are going to get tricky is the little dance between extirpate and abeyance. So w how does that work? Yeah, with yeah, so when he abances him, he won't be able to extirpate anymore. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't abance him, extirpate can stop the combo basically whenever, you know? And extirpate is obviously uncounterable. Can't be stepped, yeah, can't be forced, exactly. nothing. Can't be responded to, really. Right. And Joe doesn't really have a lot of discard. He's a little shy of thought seizes, but he makes up for it with his extra abeances out of the board. So Vial goes up to one. The Miser's misdirection. Joe, still just two land in play. Looks like Joe might have the advance, but he's a little short on combo pieces. Ponder, I believe. Ponders again. Yeah. Mm. Probably ship. I mean, maybe he wants that Cabal Therapy. Not so sure. I definitely wonder why he taps the underground scene instead of the tundra. I mean, he's not casting any white spells. He's got a vial in play. But, say la vie. May not be that relevant. Well, he's got a cabal therapy on top of his deck now. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, he does have another land. Adds a flood, uh, yeah, flooded strand to the board. Passes back, then cracks his polluted delta over an underground sea. So, at this point, what all, what's Ben looking to do here? I mean, does he, like he's loaded up with, but right now his hand is full of gas. Does he just want to drop a Jace, figuring he can weather the storm while he's tapped out that one turn, and then after that he's just going to start brainstorming every single turn and get pulled way, way ahead? Oh, he's going to go with Vendillion click? Oh, that's excellent. Put a clock on him, and look at his hand to give you yourself an idea of just how good of a hand does Joe have. Can I take the liberty of tapping up for a Jace? Right. Vendillion Click, definitely a very popular creature in this legacy format. How many different people had access to Vendillion Click in this top eight? Yeah, we have one, three here, three there. Nick Spignola. I guess not as many, because a lot of the, like, the Merfolk decks don't have it. But. Where'd the click go? I'm trying to figure out. Oh, he, was he kind of confused as to what just happened? Looked at, we looked down at the lists and the vanillian click disappeared. Okay. No, he was just picking it up while oh, stuff okay. was resolving. All right, because he can't just cast it without having the mana. Right. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you uh, wondering about whether or not Island uh, appeared in everybody's deck. It did. Island is awesome. This is the legacy. So looks like that temporary short-lived boost of aggro decks last week, people compensated against it. And we heard that Denver was actually a pretty hotbed of aggro. Pretty, yeah, at least for standard. But uh, looks nice. like the aggressive decks here are all Merfolk. Merfolk is a very, very popular strategy, it seems like. I mean, it feels like every event has just multiple Merfolk in the coverage, if not in the top eight. Well, I mean, it puts a fast clock on people. It's consistent. It's got, you know, obviously a ton of zero mana counter spells. And Aether is a very powerful card. I mean, it's not suffering on card quality or consistency. So it's a great choice for somebody who wants to play really aggressive but doesn't want to fold the uh, combo decks. So Ben takes a look, sees Joe is not really working with much. He has a Kiki Jiki, a Cabal Therapy, and a Misdirection. Now, the vial, yeah. did, did the vial vial down a Nomad? Uh, I think it did. Yeah, so at least he has the Nomad in play. However, uh, Ben's about to untap, and if he just kills the Nomad, Joe doesn't even have a whole lot going on here. And this is this is a real bad position if uh, if Ben can press the advantage. He definitely has an edge right now. Sitting on Extirpate, Force of Will, Force of Will, Blue Card, Blue Card. Oh, he's got Putrefy too, so he doesn't yeah. have Blue Card, Blue Card. He has Force of Will, Force of Will, Blue Card, Putrefy, Extirpate. Yeah. That is the type of grip that you beat the tar out of breakfast people with. Especially ones who are uh, kind of not in that great of a position anyway. 
Yeah, I mean he's. I mean he mulligan, so he's already down right. cards, and now in his, in his hand, I mean. He's his got hand. One he, of the guys that he wants at his graveyard in his hand. Yeah, he really needs to find a way to shuffle. Now, now there's the self foot illusionist that is so relevant to him. He's going to get rid of Kiki Jiki, and things actually just got a lot better for him. However, he doesn't have any counterplay for that extra bait. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be an issue. He did find another brainstorm though, so if he unfortunately doesn't have any way to shuffle this stuff away. However, if he just hangs out for a little bit, he can try to set up. Because as it is now, Ben definitely has the advantage in hand. Joe might not know how much more of an advantage, but he knows that Ben knows how strong his hand is. The clock, three-turn clock, but it's possible he just waits two turns and uh, and tries to develop his, his position a little bit. As it is now, he seems a fair bit away from being competitive here. Like he, yeah. he really, like, he even, like... I mean, he really needs a uh, he really needs an advance. And Ben took the Cabal therapy, right? So with no Cabal therapy, Joe is left with just a misdirection. Now he can use misdirection on like either the putrefy or the you know the, the, the force of will or the yeah. force of will. But that's just one layer. He still needs an advance for the extirpate. Ben has multiple force of wills to protect it. Really? Yeah. Well, once again, it appears we are running into the, the 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 issue of at the end of the day, everybody leaves and the room becomes very very quiet. I'm really surprised that anybody can hear us. We're yeah, not we're not talking it very it loud. Doesn't so. yeah. they say it? I mean, one cannot doubt the daredevil. <laughs> All right, so at this point, <laughs> we, need, we need to play, put like a radio over there. Joe, brainstorming again. He's gonna have to find an advance and just some way to try to force it through. Once again, not much mind at all, leaving Joe with uh, sort of a sealed fate, you know. When he's at this point, he's going to have to play the Cephal Illusionist, if only to mill himself so that he can run into some fresh cards. Right. Like, he's probably just going to give up on comboing it off at all and just try to get the mediocre beats going, you know. Yeah, we saw uh, him manage to do that earlier after losing a piece of his combo, the loss to Kiki Jiki. Now brainstorm. Ben, a fully loaded grip. Has Joe on a uh, three-turn clock and four layers of protection. And this is exactly what Ben wants to try to do. You know, rely on Joe drawing some of those bad cards early <laughs> and uh, start riding your advantage. You know. Like keep using brainstorms or jaces to set up your hand. Vendillion click can put some pressure. I mean, plus obviously just drawing lots of your interaction. You know, if you draw yeah. lots of your disruptive cards, and that's the that's the age-old problem with breakfast. That's what everybody always says. What's the problem with breakfast? There are no cards that are not good against it. You know, <laughs> like it's weak to everything. Like it's a super powerful deck and it beats everybody game one. But no matter what hate there is, it's vulnerable to every single kind of hate. It's vulnerable to creature removal, graveyard removal, permission, discard, everything. I mean, still, it's uh, it's so blisteringly fast. It just gets tons and tons of free wins. So, I got a feeling we're gonna see Joe vial down a Cephalid, and maybe, maybe he'll vial down Kataki. <laughs> Figure. You know, they're hearing what we're saying. <laughs> I don't think they're hearing what we're saying. Yeah, we're being quiet. No, I think we're being we quiet. Understand. But it would be pretty funny. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he'll do that. Sarah though. Angel. Yeah, he's not at five on the vial <laughs> yet. I remember when vial <coughs> cost two. Play testing. Okay. You say, are you referring to another card or? No, no different era, different day. So many stories that may never be told. 
So, Joe, worldly tutoring. Is he running the old worldly tutor miss? Uh, yeah, I think he may be. Just, Just wanted to shuffle. Yeah. yeah. Had to shuffle away the Kiki Jiki and the Narc Amiibo. He's in real bad shape. It's kind of interesting, though. I mean, do for sure. Well, what are you going to do? At this point, Joe has a Nomad in core, an Aether Vile, and just plays his fifth land. Then, plenty of mana, a lot of cards in hand, and a Vendillion click. At this point, Joe is rapidly running out of time. Okay. Super close microphones now. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we have the just random sky, sir. There's no question. Joe was hoping to uh, draw, to draw a little bit more in the way of protection. Yeah. But we're just about at the end of the road. He's just going to have to do it raw, and he's going to lose. Not really sure what kind of trickery he could try to, to pull off to swindle this one either, just because, I mean, Ben's not even being greedy with his mana. He's just attacking with the Vendillion click every turn, and a couple more turns of this, and it'll be over with. Yep. Ben already has four layers of protection. Yeah, not really much they can do but go to game three. Well, I mean, Joe can drop a Narc Amiibo. You know, stuff like that. Try to fight, make him fight over the irrelevant stuff. Because mm -hmm. that can block a Vendillion click. It's an argument, but flies. Oh, does it? Jeez, yeah. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, you gotta try to, gotta try to make your bad cards into something mm -hmm. useful. Maybe Benji uses creature kill on it, but at least it's one less creature kill for your combo when you try to go for it. Right. One way or another, you gotta turn those cards into something. And so often that's a challenge with these decks like Alarin or Flash or Breakfast. You have all these dead cards that you have to sometimes figure out how to, you know, make something with. You gotta MacGyver it, you know? <laughs> like, you just gotta rubber band an empty box of matches and, you know, somebody's umbilical cord. <laughs> <laughs> that, I didn't remember seeing that on MacGyver. I mean, it's been a while, but it's just that's not one that I remember him using. So, he vials down the Narc Amoeba. Strangely, on the end step instead of the attack phase. He may have forgotten the flies until he heard you bring it up. Is he, <laughs> is he just gonna... He just wants to sky Hussar? I guess. I don't know. This is ambitious considering Joe is at three life. But he does get a blue card and a force of will for his two cards for the turn, thanks to the sky Hussar. So, I guess he got what he wanted. He wanted a layer of protection. So we're going to see we're going to see a, a valiant effort. He's going to go for it. So, violing down the Cephalid. Is this the showdown? It maybe. Is this the showdown? I think this is the showdown. Let me see what happens here. So, on Joe's side of the board, <laughs> we've got, uh, five lands. Uh, an Aether Vial on, what is it, two? Mm-hmm. Uh, tap now. Yeah, tapped. Just vial down a Cephalid Illusionist. He's got a Narc Amoeba tapped and a Nomad's Encore tapped. And um, he cracked his Flooded Strand. Yep, got to get the land out of your deck because he's right about to start milling himself. Yep, so looks like he's going to grab an Underground Sea. Not too relevant when he gets here. Ben, meanwhile, with, is that eight land? Yeah, eight land. And a grip full of prime action. Also, Vendillion click and play, which has been bringing the beats. Yep, he's got Joe at two life, so it's now or never. See, I still think he should have vial down the Narc Amoeba during the attack phase, potentially buy himself time, draw out a removal spell, and then on his upkeep, if the Narc Amoeba got killed by an instant speed removal spell, mm -hmm. vial the Cephalid down on your own upkeep, forecast, and just go hard. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. 
the extra bit. Yeah. Yep. Yep, this is... So I mean, I don't think he can beat a single extra bit in this position, because eventually he's going to flip a Narc Amoeba, and eventually it's going to get extra bitted. But, we'll see. So he has already started the milling process. Ben, patiently, just hanging out. No reason to do anything now. Nope. Because if he tries to kill something in response, he'll just mill a whole bunch of response anyway. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that, that Ben did not choose to to kill the nomad in response to the Cephal getting piled down. Yeah, that would have been... But that's not necessarily a bad play, because if he wants to just save his mana, maybe he thinks there's a different point to bottleneck, you know? Right. Joe, knowing three cards again. I predict the critical juncture will be when Narcomuba trigger uh, comes into play. Be any second now, really. And no. Mm -hmm. Three more. Nope. The milling continues. Both players surveying Joe's graveyard wants to want to keep track of how much has been milled. And, and still, the Narcomeeples do continue to not show. Wow. The land continues to burn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's one. There is a Narcomeeple trigger. So. This is the showdown. Hold up. I want to play a spell. It's an extirpate. Is he extirpating the Narcomeeple? Didn't see what he pointed at. He Look pointed at the Dread Return. The Dread Return, okay. So, extirpate your dread return. Yeah, do you want to look through and find... This? It's the only dread return, isn't it? It is the only dread return. Yeah, so... Th nothing wrong with taking a look through. Oh, no, absolutely not. Just, I was just making sure just you know what's... You know, wondering my for my own purposes here. Yep. I don't think that's something I'm pretty sure you missed. Yeah, but you can close your eyes. Yeah, we just had a ruling of whether or not you're allowed to keep your eyes closed when you look through your opponent's deck. <laughs> it is legal, in fact, to close your eyes. <sighs> well, he's certainly got to stop milling now. Yeah, let's, uh... So, at this point, they're going to fight over Sky Hussar. Ben is going to win this fight. And at that point, the one Narcomeva is the only thing holding off the Vendillion Click, so that if Ben actually does have a move spell, it's Curtains. Actually, I mean, I guess Joe can continue milling more and just look for the third Narcan mm -hmm. to make sure he has a blocker. He has dangerously low in cards in his library, however. But uh, if that's his only option, that's... I mean, well, the first thing, I think he's got to decide, do I for sure play this guy, Hussar? Right. Because he's got Misdirection, Force of Will, blue card, blue card, as long as he doesn't play the Sky Hussar. 11 cards left in the library. And that's not actually that few. I mean, no, a, you can get a lot of work done. He got a lot. He got more done with less. When he had five cards left in that first, uh, that first game we watched, oh, or that first match we watched. Yeah, he doesn't actually have a fourth blue card. He has Ether Vial. So he's definitely seems seems like we start with the Cabal Therapy, which is probably get mental misstepped here. So Cabal Therapy, flashing back, sacrificing Narcomiba. The tapped one. Yeah, the tapped Narcomiba. That's definitely relevant. Ben, the decision is to pay two life or not. He pays the two. Figures this isn't going to be a game of inches with regards to the life total. Joe's only play left at this point. He's got to play Sky, sir. Ben, hard casting for Swell. Joe. Misdirection. It's going to misdirect the force of will to its to the misdirection, or not to the yeah, not to the misdirection, but yeah. So the misdirection is going to target the force of will and make the force of will target the misdirection. Right. And that's about all Joe can do. So misdirection, removing a force of will. Uh, 
force back. And Sky Hussar goes to the graveyard, successfully countered. Now the interesting thing here is that Joe did manage to put up enough of, a, uh, of an attack mm -hmm. that he stripped Ben of all of his cards. Yep. This makes me, you know, go back and point to the fact that could have extirpated the Narcomute. Yeah, that would have done... Because uh you can still counter the, tr the Dread Return. Right. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, Joe is certainly in a really bad spot here. And with no mana, he's not going to be able to, to actually use the Cephalid ability. He's just chomping. And so it remains to be seen what he can actually do to get out of this, you know? Joe now has to decide, do I go get a second Narc Amoeba so that I can actually, you know, at, at least kill that factory? Because he's going to have to block the Vendillion Click with the Narc Amoeba. Mm -hmm. If he finds the second Narc Amoeba in his top three cards, taking down the factory here helps stabilize quite a bit. Yeah. He decides he's going to go for it. And Once no again, Narc Amoeba. Down to eight cards. Does it again? again and down to five cards. And he does oh. find the Narc Amoeba. Five cards is not a ton, but you can do 14 damage with five cards. So we see, and Joe actually decides to chump the factory so as to maintain his combo. Hmm. He wants to keep the stuff with Illusionist. I guess as a backup plan, at least the Illusionist can block, you know, can block the Mishra's factory indefinitely. Right. One way or another, though, he's going to have to figure out how to get a lot more damage in. Karmic Guide is, <coughs> like if Karmic Guide is still in this library, that's his play. Should, I think it is. Yeah, it's hard to see his whole graveyard, but do we have any way of knowing how many guys is in his graveyard? Yeah. And there's the advance, a day late and a dollar short. This game, we're, we're, we're trying to, s we're sending somebody down to find out if Karmic Guide is already in the graveyard or not. Oh, no, no, Never he's mind. packing it in. It must have already been in the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. So going to game three here in the semifinals of Star City Games Open Series Denver. Uh, the legacy portion, we ha we're watching Ben Stepka and Joe Lawson. Ben on a uh, bug still list versus Joe Lawson's Cephalid Breakfast deck, which uh, quickly took game one. Game two, uh, it was put couldn't up, a, put up a heck of a fight, but couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't quite break through. He ended up one card short, and he did take a mulligan, which is so hard in these type of matchups. Yeah. We'd like to congratulate our six-month premium uh, winner from the question. The question was, what was the cheapest blue creature in Brian Kibler's Grand Prix Singapore deck? The, uh, the winner is Mark Young, at MM Young, uh, with the answer, Vidalkin Surtek. Yep. Vidalkin Surtek, cost him just a single blue mana. So uh, we did get an interesting thing from Twitter here. The first Pro Tour. The first Pro Tour was Worlds 1994, which had one American in the top four. It wasn't a Pro there. Tour. Right. It, it wrong. was Worlds, wasn't it? I mean, no, it wasn't. I mean, I'm saying it was just Worlds. It wasn't... Consistent. Yeah, that wasn't a Pro Tour. Right. Yeah, well, whoever it is, they're wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you know, one Yeah, so I guess Harry0889. Harry no, no, J. No, 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 that's another person. It's a different it's person? It's this person here. AJ Firecracker. AJ Firecracker. Uh, your heart is in the right place. However, once again, you did not Google the information that you're claiming before trying to say that we're wrong. The Pro Tour was invented by Scaff Elias and was originally the Black Lotus Million Dollar Magic the Gathering Pro Tour. The first Pro Tour was the one that Michael Acanto won, the self-proclaimed Michael Jordan of Magic. The, uh, the, the top eight, the, the five people in the top eight that were Americans were George Baxter, Mark Justice, Hammer Reginier, Michael Acanto, Preston Poulter with the three international players being Bertrand Lestray, Eric Tam, and Leon Lindbeck. Zach Dolan. Do you know what Zach Dolan won for being the world champion? He won a few boxes of boosters. There's actually a pretty insane article by Zach Dolan on uh, Star City mm -hmm. on the Untold Legends of the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour. If you look at the Untold Legends uh, article by Zach Dolan, you can hear a little bit about his early exploits. But that was definitely not a pro tour. It was neither a tour nor by any reasonable stretch of the imagination, professional. It was a 512, per it was like a, a giant single elimination tournament that was the equivalent of type one, just because there was no other format, where the winner had Layla, Layla uh, Lay Druid, Stasis, Sarah Angel, Instill Energy, Power Sync, all sorts of stuff. Clone, Vesuvian Doppelganger. Wow. 
but the none of that is why it's not a Pro Tour. Why it's not a Pro Tour is that they did not brand it as a Pro Tour. They announced the event of the Pro Tour in 1996, and the first one took place in New York. All right. Do, do we get to give any way any more premium? Yes, we do. Yeah, a year before the finals. Yep. Just before the finals? Sweet. Yep. We'll, okay, a, we'll ask a question. For that one. All right, good. So, we'll, yeah, we'll ask a question uh, on, um, uh, I guess, right after game one of the finals, and then people can answer it, and we will congratulate the winner at the end of the finals. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you who won premium yesterday or today, uh, Evan or someone will likely contact you sometime in the next few days. So what are you saying? Don't call us, we'll call you? Yep. We'll have our, our people call you. Because I assume you don't have people. You're assuming I don't have people? Not you. The pe- You're crazy if you think people. I... If I you, know if you, you think have e- people. And, you have and I know, and I I know that M.M. Young has people. Yeah. There's no question. If there's one person who has people, it's Mark Young. All right. AJ so Firecracker says, you're right. <laughs> I did look it up, but misinterpreted the information. The first Pro Tour was not, in fact, 1994 World Champs. No, that was the first World Championship, though. Yeah. And it was definitely the first major, major tournament, too. You know, that's the, bi- that's the first earliest recorded major tournament. I mean, there was a tournament at Gen Con. Actually, the first ever uh, uh, Magic tournament was won by a black red deck with Dark Rituals, mm-hmm. Juggernauts, uh, 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 pl- like just various random dudes, lightning bolts, uh, defeating a green white deck, and both were very much the equivalent of sealed decks because <laughs> just card availability. You know, yeah. all anybody had was a few boosters and whatever they traded for. Right. That so was at Gen Con in 1994. Game three has begun with both players or leading, on a, uh, leading on an underground seat. Ben Stepka. with visions though. Now Suspense all he has to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If he can just live through the first four turns. Mm-hmm then Visions gives him a real good way to get a game-winning advantage, you know? Because already, as the game goes long, Joe has a lot of dead cards and stuff that just end up wasting time. Right. Ben, all he needs to do is survive long enough to have this Visions, and he's in a pretty good spot. It looks like his hand has a nice mix. He has blue cards, Force of Will, Extirpate, Mana. This is, a, this is exactly what Ben is looking for. Joe brainstorms. Deliberating, went to a bat with Brainstorm. Yep. Look at that card in Ben's hand, did you see that? It's a black one? Yep. Yeah, yep. So, Joe, playing a Flooded Strand, getting that all, n- that all valuable shuffle, mm-hmm. and a fresh look. Yep. So often it's like ins- it's like Brainstorm does Ancestral Recall in these sorts of decks, you know? Yeah. We, al- we, we always used to talk about back in the day with Flash, um, how the four brainstorms were better than Ancestral Recall in the vintage flash decks. Uh, we'd actually rather have three brainstorms in our deck than the Ancestral Recall, you know? Yeah. Just because most of the time brainstorms like an Ancestral Recall anyway because you have so many dead cards. Mm-hmm. It's just so important to be able to shuffle them back, you know? Plus, Ancestral Recall gets misdirected. Brainstorm doesn't. Yeah. That's and Brainstorm saves you the trouble of having to therapy yourself. Nobody really wants to th- go to therapy themselves, you know? So... Brainstorm from Stepka meets Mental Misstep from Joe. Is this another step of Stepka's step? If, Ste- if Stepka steps the step of Stepka's brainstorm, I'm going to enjoy saying what's going on. And it looks, looks like, like the stack knowledge. stops. Yeah. Stepka's step step stops. <laughs> so Joe cracks his flooded strand. Now, did Stepka miss his land drop? It appears that way, and I think that's why he was brainstorming. So as not to miss that land drop. See, it looked like he had another land in his hand, but that's it turned out he did not. So he may have stone cold everything else, but he does not have a second land. And often in these types of matchups, you can get real bottlenecked on mana. Yeah. I mean, he can sit there and just hold his black mana open, so that he can extirpate and have tons of force of wills and stuff. But this is the type of game that a combination of cabal therapies and uh, abeyances mm-hmm. could be brutal. Mm, looks like another. Mm, maybe, maybe not. What's happening here? Joe's deciding to brainstorm. 
That's the signal for I don't have a mental misstep. When's he doing this brainstorm? Is this end of turn or is this? It, it would appear to be end of turn because the okay. land was just tapped. Yeah, that's what confused me because I thought it was during his turn, but I'm trying to figure out what that other land was tapped for. So he finds. Looks like he has both halves of the combo now, and the mana to do it all. The question is, does he care about protection? It's kind of sick that he doesn't have to deal with extra bait this turn. He decides he's just going to go for it. He looks like it. Oh, oh no, he takes it back. He's thinking about it a little bit. So. Dude. Looks like he has a couple more blue cards in his hand. It'll be interesting to see which ones they are. Cephal Illusionist draws the Force of Will. Stepka figuring that Joe might be leading with the Illusionist just to try to bait him into countering the Nomad. You know? Thinking yeah. maybe Joe has two Nomads, so he's going to lead with by countering the first one this time. Joe drops a vial. Perhaps the Cephal Illusionist was only a ruse. Not everybody plays vial in the breakfast decks, but it's so good against these blue decks. Absolutely. So Stepka finds a Pluto Delta. Wow. Extra paint on Cephalid Illusionist. So. Makes things uh, awkward. Joe's going to have to do this the hard way. The, uh, the, the breakfast deck isn't really capable of milling itself with a Cephalid Illusionist. However, it can still win. It can still combo mm -hmm. off. It just has to assemble the combination of Karmic Guide, Kiki Jiki, and Sky Hussar naturally. Now, it does have a lot of library manipulation and tutors. But now, instead of a two-car combo, you got to make a three-car combo. Instead of having nine copies of the pieces, you got one of each. Yeah, it's a lot tougher. It's a lot tougher. And uh, this configuration of Joe's breakfast deck is not particularly well suited for the backup plan. So he fought through surgical extraction last round. But this round, it looks like extirpate may end up being deciding. The visions is ticking away. Okay, this is going to be. I mean, Joe's got to be a huge dog from this position. Without Cephal Illusionist, he's got so little action, and that that uh, the visions is very soon going to leave Ben with even more gas to help refill. You know. Yeah. So uh, thought seizes away the nomads, leaving Joe with just a brainstorm, and. Uh, really looks like I don't know how he wins this fight. Well, you can vial up to five because all your combo pieces cost five. Right, right. So hopefully Joe is ticking, like, to make it interesting, Joe's got to be ticking his vial all the way up. If Ben gets flooded with counter spells, mm -hmm. you don't actually have to cast any counter spells at all. Any right. spells that can be countered. Right. You can just vial out all the five drops. Yeah, considering he doesn't need to, uh, he, he doesn't, doesn't have to dread return. He doesn't, right. have to do any he, that. he doesn't actually need the karmic guide. Then doesn't he just need Kiki Jiki? And oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. He doesn't need the karmic guide at all. He just needs Kiki Jiki and Sky Hussar. Karmic guide is just a backup to the combo. Right. So, still needs a two card combo. Unfortunately, he only has one copy of each, and both cost five. One of which is uncastable. He does have worldly tutor in hand. He still has to get that vial up to five. He's a long way away. Yeah. But I'm saying, you know. It's interesting, he didn't... Well, it's tough, because now that the Visions has resolved, it's going to be really hard to resolve a worldly tutor. Yeah. So, Joe. The other big interesting one, and it may amuse the, uh, the watchers at home, it may be Send Triplets. Yeah. Time to Shine. Another five drop that, if he just vials it down, he can actually just win the game with Send Triplets alone. That could be a very interesting situation. If Ben doesn't, you know, because if Ben doesn't have, like, Ben's a little bit choked on mana right now, so he's mm -hmm. a ways off of being able to do a lot of his primary game plan, like Jace or, or Pernicious Deed. Um, if if Ben is just flooded with counter spells, and from the fact that he's discarding spells now, you know, mm -hmm. if Ben is just flooded with counter spells, if Joe can get, if, if Joe can get to his send triplets, 
he can just vile down a mind slaver and just start ripping Ben apart, make Ben destroy yeah. himself with his own cards. What is that vial on right now? Is it four? It looks like four. I want to say it's four, yeah. So here's our brainstorm, and brainstorm meets counterspell. Oh my gosh, Joe has sent trip with an hand. Yeah, I know. I thought you saw that. That's why you brought it up, because you, you started talking about it exactly the, that turn, I think. We're going to see the, the medial, the squire beats. Shaman and core drops. For those of you that we're suggesting, it's on four. It's on four. We're just just confirming. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. The for those of you who uh, who told us that send triplets could take over this match, it turns out you may be uh, justified. It was it was Liam Kane. Storm is fair. Again, Storm is fair. Yeah, that guy. It would appear your prophecy has come... It might be coming true. We'll see. I mean, we'll see if it works. But it's certainly Joe's plan. You know, because he's not in a good spot. But there are worse spots than having that as an option. Especially since Ben is still so choked on mana. So there it goes up to five. Aether Vial on five. Draws his card for the turn. Sky Hussar. So it looks like he has Kiki Cheeky and Sky Hussar now. And... Sky Oh, so wait, but he's got Kiki He's got the combo. I didn't know he even had the had the Kiki Jiki. Yeah? Wow. Whoa. Just the, the natural actual perfects. Wow, <laughs> that is unbelievable. This is gonna be a sweet one. It's gonna be and it's certainly I mean it's not like Joe is in that great of a spot, but he's got all the tools. Ben's gonna have to have something. Because Joe definitely beats the board. I thought this is going to in get interesting. And I, I actually uh, like Joe's position here. A few seconds, yeah. I think it's going to get really interesting. Let's get dangerous. Darkwing Duck. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we have... Is that a pernicious deed? You may lose on the spot right here. Yeah. Oh no, the deed stops all the tokens. Indeed, for zero. Yeah. Well, well, the good news is send triplets. Exactly. That he's got that. Yeah. So he uh, sky hussar. Who's sky hussar? Does he not know? Why do you not play some triplets? I have not yet seen the kiki he that you mentioned. Oh, there it is. Okay. So he says, okay, I'm gonna. Copy that. Yeah, this is awkward. This is awkward. Oh, com converted mana cost is a copyable valuable value. So it is it. it oh the wow, the copies aren't yeah. tokens. Yeah, that's right. right. They're it, tokens, yeah. but they have oh, the value. They're not just like beast tokens. Wow. Good for him. I really kind of wanted to see Sand Triplets dog. <laughs> that was well done by Joe. That was an impressive. That's a impressive couple he, of he figured out what he knew. Well, it wasn't just the top decks. He knew what he needed to do. He knew that he was in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. He knew he needed to try to sculpt the game to a situation where he could actually. Go down the talk time. a little louder now. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cool. Well. Wow. Yeah, this is really cool. So that match was. <laughs> <laughs>